So we have a little visitor here. We'll see how they like uh, the water read, I suppose. Oh yeah. Hi there, so today I'd like to go over some alternative or uncommon uses for water reed. It's this long, tall, bamboo-like reed that grows near water in temperate areas like the northeastern United States. And um, I'm basically waiting to have it dry out in my basement so I can use it as a thatching or roofing material like they do over in the UK. Um, but in the meantime, I'd like to sort of explore some alternative uses. Um, I found a few things that I could do with it to sort of keep me occupied and, you know, make it a less long of a wait, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy. So surprisingly, one of the uses for water reed is a toy for cats. It's natural, a lot like bamboo, so, um, and it has wiggly bits at the end that they like to attack. Luna really actually likes these types of toys a lot. Um, anything that is similar to a blade of grass, for some reason, that's one of her favorite toys. You just wave a blade of grass around and she'll just go for it at it like a maniac. Uh, unfortunately, blades of grass are very deteriorated uh, after a bit of play. Uh, she basically just chomps them to death very quickly. But water reed is much more durable, provides a lot more play until it deteriorates. So you do have to keep an eye on them and make sure they're not biting off and swallowing very much. It's good for them to chew on, good for their teeth. Um, very nice natural toy, I'd reckon. Good job, Nuna. Rosie's a bit less of a fan. She has a good time watching Luna have a go at it, honestly. <laughs> I feel like that's enough play for her sometimes. Just the experience through the, the watching of it. Wow, good job. Didn't you get it? Oh, is that tasty? Don't eat too much of it. Good job. So one thing I noticed is that when you're playing or moving these reeds around a lot, the sheathing or like, a, I don't know, layered leaf structure that's now dry kind of just comes off. So if you see any loose bits that are ready to come off, just uh, give them a pull. That'll make sure that when you're playing with them, playing with your cats, it won't come off in their mouth or, you know, get all over the house, that type of thing. A good step to take, I'd say. Just takes a few moments and probably really helps cut down on the mess. So I actually took a knife to it and shaved down pretty much all those leaf structures off of this, uh, off of the, off of this end piece of water reed. And uh, I have to say, it makes it a bit more waggly and interesting to my other cat, Rosie, so she seems to be very interested now, too. Don't you? So, yeah, we're getting the whole family involved here, I guess. <laughs> wow. Good job. I reckon... I always have to pay through the nose for all those wand type things too that you get at the pet store. And I reckon, you know, you could get a beefy one of these water reeds, just tie a tie a good toy to the end of it and uh, save yourself a lot of money, honestly. <laughs> so I'm probably going to be doing that uh, from now on instead of paying through the nose to just get another cat toy wand that will inevitably just get destroyed and break eventually. I swear, they're just put together poorly, so you have to keep buying them. Or maybe the cats just really beat the crud out of them. Don't you? Uh, anyways, so the first use I came up with is to just sort of like take a knife, cut some, uh, make some cuts on the end, and then you can kind of use it as a cleaning rod. So <laughs> I'm planning to clean out all this gunk at the, the bottom of this glass uh, jug. Yeah, as you can see, it just does a pretty good job of physically uh, getting in there. And of course, like, you know, the reed is pretty tall. I think the reed I harvested was right eight or nine feet after I... Well, it must have been around double my height, so 12 or 13 feet after I cut off the, the grain at the end to, you know, not prevent the grain from being sp spread. And then 
um, even after cutting it in half, it's like five feet. So pretty much this can be as long as you need it to be so you can get into all of those haul containers that you might have. I gotta say, my dad had this jug in the garage for a long time. I think he used to do more brewing type deal things with it. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what this crud is. But this is the only way I've managed to really dislodge it after trying several things. So we've taken a look at uh, the upper sections of the reed and how those can be used. Uh, I'm sure I'm not coming up with everything, but there's a few. Let's take a look now at the lower sections of the reed, the stronger, more burly sections, and how that looks. So looking at, you know, where I cut it, the first thing that comes to mind is Wow, this reminds me a lot of bamboo. We've got, you know, a very light uh, green hollow tube type shape, which screamed bamboo to me. And um, sure enough, looking on Wikipedia, they are related down to the family level. So same kingdom, same clades, same order, down to the family, they share similarities. So basically we have a temperate bamboo for most intents and purposes. Um, <clears throat> which I find very cool. Taking a look inside of these larger sections of tube, I've cut it apart here so you, we can actually take a closer look. You can see what's going on more easily. So we can see that there's a lot of this sort of wispy white material. We also see that there are sections that seem to be segregated. So. This section of hollow tube, which is probably weakest here, is then reinforced at these uh, periodic areas. So uh, I've heard that it could be used as a straw, these these uh, water reeds. So I've actually tried before and it didn't work, but as I cut it apart now, I see you pretty much need to cut it where these sort of segregations are not. So you get a contiguous uh, straw, so to speak and then you're able to pull liquid through. So I'm gonna give that a try, see how it goes. Um, hopefully it's not too laughable for y'all. All right, I'll show you the cutting process as well. So basically you need to pick a spot where you see those dark marks, um, cause that's where those segregations are gonna be. And then cut there accordingly. So here I see a dark spot. I'm just gonna start cutting and with a sharp knife, kind of cut at a 45 degree angle, maybe get a little bit of a scissoring action going. Just make sure your fingers are clearly out of the way. And uh, hopefully for you, it will go a little bit more clean than that. <laughs> I just lost it off the side of the counter here, but not my cleanest work, but <laughs> it'll do. <laughs> and then for the other end, we can just uh, do the same thing. And you can see I cut pretty shallow just because uh, I don't want to want to hack at it really hard on the, the counter like this, but you can cut it a bit more normal to the to the length of the structure. All right, let's give it a try. Well, I don't know if you can see the water go down, but that definitely worked. Not a bad straw, actually. Um, I'm not getting a lot of adverse flavors or anything too. Um, although you might want to clean it out if you're a germaphobe or, you know, worried about contagion or any sort of bacteria that might be out there in the swamps of your area, uh, which is a non-trivial thing. Actually, you do have to be kind of worried about that. So, so if you do use this as a straw, maybe disinfect it, um, you know, take precautions to make sure there aren't any strange <laughs> materials in there. But, um, but yeah, surprisingly good as a straw. I also believe um, water reed has been used for, you know, making baskets and weaves of various sorts. When you cut it up, you can get these like long pliable strands that are, you know, almost flat. And at which point you could definitely weave these things together. Um, you could definitely do it perhaps dry like this. They're quite flexible as it is and not super prone to breaking. Uh, but you could definitely put them in hot water, have them soak a bit, and I imagine that would increase the pliability and you could have very good weaving ability. Um, 
it's just a matter of, you know, how good can you get these strips and how uniform and um, how long you can get them depending on what you're doing. But I would be interested in making a mat or, you know, something like that with these types of uh, reeds. I think it would be interesting and, you know, something cool to do. Definitely seems, you know, strong enough and, you know, durable enough to hold up to most types of abuse and uh, scrutiny and use. So, yeah, that's an interesting thought as well.